or at the beach or on a picnic. Wherever you are, help to keep all America beautiful. You're listening to WGN Radio, broadcasting all the Cubs games at home and away. Licensed practical nurses are urgently needed. If you're between the ages of 17 and 55, enroll now in the state-approved practical nursing program of the Chicago Public Schools. The time, 1.15. This is Jack Quinlan with the leadoff man, brought to you by Heilemann's Old Style Beer, the beer with a tingle. Discover Old Style. You'll love that Old Style tingle. We're speaking from Wrigley Field in Chicago. The San Francisco Giants are in town for the second game of a four-game series. The pitchers today are going to be a couple of right-handers against each other, Sad Sam Jones for the Giants and Mo Drabowski for the Chicago Cubs. And our guest in a moment will be a fellow who pitched a fine ball game out here yesterday for the Giants, left-hander Mike McCormick. Right now, though, time out for the three most refreshing words in the language, old-style beer. Old-style is the beer that has a teasing tingle. Love that old-style tingle. Such a pleasing tingle. Old-style beer, you see, is brewed the way a beer should be. Very, very leisurely. Which gives old style the tingle. Love that old style tingle. Yes, sir, you'll love that old style tingle. Old style beer is the beer that's naturally brewed in the cool of La Crosse, Wisconsin. There's no artificial carbonation in old style. This is the beer that's brewed long enough, slowly enough, to have a natural life and tingle all its own. Have an old style. You'll love that old style tingle. Naturally brewed by the G. Heileman Brewing Company, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Our guest today is left-hander Mike McCormick of the San Francisco Giants, who beat the Cubs yesterday by a score of 2-1 to one on three hits. Mike, you must be feeling pretty good about that performance. Well, that's right, Jack. Uh, I always feel happy when I can win. In this town, it's always been a pretty tough town for me. Well, your record now is 11 wins and 8 defeats. You're a cinch to better your previous best mark of 12 victories. What are you shooting for this year? How many wins would you like to put in that column? Well, of course, I don't know how many starts I'm going to have left, but uh, before the season started, I had hoped to reach 15 this year based on what I had done in the past. Everybody, of course, shoots for that 20-game uh, win season, but I just like to take them one at a time and hope for the best. Mike, what's uh, the most important thing to a pitcher at contract time, the number of victories and defeats or a low earned run average? Now, you should win 15 ball games or more this year. You have an earned run average, which is well below 300. It might even be down to about two and a half runs per nine innings now. What would you like to get, a low earned run average or 16 or 17 wins? Well, of course, I think the, the first thing they pay you for is the wins. Uh, another thing, if you have a bad year as far as wins are concerned, and you do have the exceptionally good earned run average, that, of course, is in your favor. You've pitched good ball. They just haven't supported you with too many runs. But uh, a combination of the two, of course, is even better, and uh, that's something that you'd like to work for. Where's your home, Mike? Well, right now I live in the suburbs of San Francisco, but I'm originally from the Los Angeles area. So you moved up north a little bit. How is it the chap uh, happened to sign with the Giants as a bonus baby? Well, one reason, of course, the, the price was right. Uh, I was a bonus player, and uh, another reason, we felt the opportunities at the time were a little better to pitch with this club. They were in sixth place. And uh, we felt that if I was going to get a chance at all to pitch in my two years on that bonus deal, that possibly with the Giants I would have the best chance, and it worked out that way. Were any other teams under serious consideration? Yes, uh, I talked to almost all of them. I'd have to say all but Cincinnati. Uh, the Yankees were very interested in me, but they weren't too hot on the money idea. I mean, they were going along real good then, and they couldn't see carrying a young bonus player. Uh, Baltimore talked to me. Uh, Pittsburgh was very anxious to get me to sign because I had worked out quite a few times with the old Hollywood Stars, which, of course, was a Pittsburgh farm team. How old were you when you first signed that contract? 17. And you're what now? 21. So you've been in the, this your fifth year? That's right. Uh-huh. Were you a, uh, I presume you were a high school phenom out there in L.A.? Well, based on records, I guess you'd have to say so. Of course, high school, once again, you don't know how to... Uh, qualify a fella for that because so many fellas have those great years in high school and it proves nothing but like you say I did have some outstanding records and uh, I'm sure that that's what helped me get here how old are you Mike right now I'm 21 you're 21 years old well uh, not being in the minors couldn't have slowed you down a whole lot do you think that you missed anything by not pitching any minor league ball no but only because I was able to pitch up here uh, my first actual full year here I I pitched some 90 odd innings and the following year I followed that up with 178 innings and last year I was in 240 innings, so that uh, 
I feel I was fortunate enough to pitch in the big leagues, which is where you learn to face the opposition, which are, you know, you're working towards. Who has worked with you, Mike? Who do you think is responsible for some of your success? Well, uh, we've had two or three pitching coaches in my short time here. Bucky Walters, I would have to say, was the first. Frank Schellenbach has helped me every spring and spring training. Uh, in 58, Wes Westrom was our pitching coach and uh, watched me because he had caught me prior to that. And right now, I'd have to say Bill Postdell has helped me an awful lot, especially on my changeup. I was going to ask you about a slow curveball that you seem to be using very effectively yesterday. Is this a new pitch you've developed this year or just have been working on, and this is the first year it's really come around for you? Well, this is the first year I've thrown it. Uh, I've always had trouble usually getting my curveball over. And I found out that by taking a little off now and then, uh, it added to my pitching repertoire, and uh, therefore... I could throw that hard pitch, hard curve, and maybe miss, and then come back with a slow curve, and uh, it has the batter off stride. It's just like a changeup. You practice a lot in that batting cage, Bunny, and you look like a real good bunter. Well, the funny thing is, this year I think I have 14 hits now, and nine of them are, eight or nine of them are by bunts. Well, I understand you've bunted safely a few times for hits with two strikes on you, which is unusual for anybody to do, especially a pitcher. Well, that's right. Uh, for some reason or other, and it's probably because I'm not too good a hitter, I just can't seem to wait for a left-hander's curve. What do you do during the offseason, Mike? Well, the past couple of years, I've been associated in the sporting good business, and at the same time, I have gone to uh, put in a little time in college. Well, where, where are you going? Well, I have gone to Bakersfield, J.C., and uh, I'm planning on going in the San Francisco area as soon as I can get situated. How many shutouts have you thrown this year? Uh, three, I believe. That must give you a pretty good feeling to know that you've been out there two or three or three and a half or four hours and have been pitching against major league opposition and haven't allowed a run. Right. Uh, those are always nice to have. I. The only thing is I... So I guess I haven't pitched one for quite a while now. I had three of them rather early in the season. Another thrill for you, Mike, must have been your selection on the All-Star squad this year. Right. That, that indeed is a privilege, especially the first time you can be selected. What about when your playing days are over? Here you're 21 years old. You have 15 or 20 years left in front of you as a great pitcher. But what about when you take the uniform off? Well, I tell you, Jack, uh, it's so far ahead. At least I hope it's so far in advance that I, I'm not really looking that much uh, forward to it. I am saving my money and investing it what I feel is wisely, and at the same time, I'm keeping my eyes open for uh, the right opportunity and something in a business line. Uh, you look like a fellow who really has his two feet on the ground. Mike, there have been many complaints by hitters in Candlestick Park. How do the pitchers feel about that, especially a left-hander like you? You shouldn't have too many complaints about pitching out there with the wind blowing to right field. Well, the first homestand, uh, it was actually what I'd call a pitcher's paradise. I was pitching one hitters, two hitters, three hitters, shutouts, but uh, it seemed that all the wind was centered around the outfield. It wasn't too bad in the infield. Well, now, uh, after that first homestand, we went back there, and for some reason or other, there was an awful lot of wind on the mound. And uh, I think if you talk to all our pitchers, you would find out that it is starting to bother them. Uh, it's tough when you try to throw a ball to the outside corner or something like that, and uh, the wind pushes it way outside. And uh, I suppose it's to an advantage because your ball is moving a little more than it would on the road. But still, uh, I would say control-wise, it is starting to hamper our pitchers. Would you rather pitch on the road there than in Candlestick? Well, no, because you, you pitch more at home and uh, you get more adjusted to the ballpark. Uh, I feel that uh, under certain conditions, I would rather pitch on the road. I was really looking forward to this trip just to get into some uh, warm weather. How about Johnny Antonelli? Do you think that the, the new ballpark out there is the reason that he hasn't had a great year? Well, John's had his problems this year. I think the first one started when he got that muscle spasm in his back in uh, spring training. Uh, he was throwing real well. In fact, as, as good as I've ever seen him throw at that time of the year, and that thing just hit him. So it took him two or three weeks to get back in shape, and uh, no sooner had we done that, we went into the candlestick, and I think the cold wind caused him to have another spasm. And uh, he's just had one thing after another bother him this year. But uh, as far as John's concerned, he's throwing as good now as he ever has. Mike, I want to thank you for being our guest on the leadoff show. I want to wish you a lot of luck in that uh, giant uniform. I know you'll be wearing a big league suit for many years. Good luck to you. Well, thank you, Jack. Mike McCormick of the San Francisco Giants. Now have an old style. Old style is the beer that has a teasing tingle. Love that old style tingle. Such a pleasing tingle. Old style beer you see is brewed the way a beer should be. Very, very leisurely. Which gives old style the tingle. Love that old style tingle. The leadoff man has been brought to you today by Heilemann's Old Style Beer, the beer with a natural tingle. Discover old style today. You'll love that old style tingle. 
Now this is Jack Quinlan reminding you to stay tuned in just a moment for the ball game between the Cubs and the Giants right here on WGN Radio Chicago, first in sound, first in service, and first in sports. Time for Tim and Jim, Guardian Maintenance Men, brought to you by your Chevrolet car and truck, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, Cadillac, and GMC truck dealers. Joining the boys, an ancient black sedan riddled with many strange little holes drives in, and the woman driver says, yoo -hoo, Tim and Jim, can you fill in these strange little holes in my car? Well, yes, ma'am. Quality appearance services are a featured part of Guardian Maintenance. We have the GM training, the proper tools, and right paints, ma'am. Your two gems. About those strange holes, ma'am. Bullet holes. You see, I pick up a nice piece of change renting my ancient black sedan to that TV show, The Unmentionables. Trouble is, it gets shot up every week. I will have your car looking like new again, ma'am. Thank you. We need it for the next show. It's being used as a roadblock to stop 14 brewery trucks. <laughs> Be sure to see your General Motors dealer. He's never too busy to give your GM car or truck the guardian maintenance care it deserves. Wow! 